What's up everybody, Sam Smice here. Today I wanna to talk about granular synthesis and to do that, I'm gonna be walking through how to use Granulator 2, which is a free instrument that you can find within the Ableton Live suite. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please consider subscribing and also please go ahead and give this video a like if you do enjoy this type of content. I first wanna talk a little bit about what granular synthesis is. Granular synthesis is very similar to sampling, but with granular synthesis, you can actually divide up your samples into very, very small sizes. So one millisecond to 10 millisecond to 100 millisecond, these very small slices, which is called a grain. And this is how you get that name, granular synthesis. And these small little grains, you can loop them over and over and over, and then you can get these really unique sounds. And you can also pull these grains from different parts of an audio file, so it doesn't just have to be one little grain. You can actually have these little grains pulled from the audio file and then play it at random or in order or, or just really modulate the ways that you are playing these grains. And I know that probably doesn't make much sense right now, but I'll go more into it as we open up the Granulator 2. So this is my Ableton session. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Max for Live, and this is where I'll find the Granulator 2. So I've got a MIDI track, and let's go ahead and put Granulator 2 in here. One thing to note is that Granulator 2 is only available with Ableton Live Suite. So if you don't have the suite, then you will not have access to Granulator 2. But if you do have the suite, then you'll be able to find it either in here already, or you can just download it from the Ableton website. I've got a sample right here. This is just gonna be a little vocal loop. Let me go ahead and play this for you. So I'm gonna load that into my granulator, and this is the same as just using a sampler. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it into here. So let's drag and drop it. And now we can see our sample here. And if I zoom in, we can see the little selection. I can zoom out. And so let me play a note on my keyboard. So now we see this little section being looped back and forth. So I can zoom in a little bit, and then I can also change the actual position just by clicking where I want it to play from. Or I can actually move it back and forth with this file position. So let me go ahead and zoom out a bit, and I can do zoom all, and that will show me the whole file. I can go over here. So now the first knob is going to be our grain size knob. So if I increase this, the grain gets smaller. And if I decrease it, the grain size gets bigger. Or we can just call that the loop. So at this size, it becomes essentially just like a sampler. But if I make it super fast like this, I'm playing notes on my keyboard and now it sounds like a new instrument. I could put some reverb on it. I could play one note. And just by moving that knob, I'm creating some really cool atmospheres and textures. A really cool application of granular synthesis is creating pads, new sounds from various instruments, and just really helping you in your creative process. So let me go ahead and just take this reverb off. Here I have my key tracking, and so basically when I play a note on my keyboard, the parameter is going to change depending on the note that I play. So if I play a low note versus a high note, then notice that the speed of that loop is different. If I make this grain size as small as I can be, and play two different notes on my keyboard, then we can hear that they're different pitches. But if I put this key tracking at zero, I'm just playing a lot of different notes on my keyboard there, and they all basically sound like the same note. So I'm gonna leave this on 100%. Another way to show you how key tracking works is I can go into my serum. This is a filter, and this is the option for turning on key tracking. So if I play a note on my serum here, we can see that the filter changes depending on the note that I play. So the higher that I get, the more that this filter raises up. So that's essentially what key tracking does. And you have this option on a lot of the parameters in the granulator. So you have the key tracking here. And then also if I go into this other view, we have some other parameters where you can do the key tracking as well. So then of course we've got the file position. So this allows you to choose which part of the audio you're sampling. And then the key tracking, it's currently at zero. If I raise it up to 100, then it's gonna play all the way out there to the left. If I take it to negative 100, it's gonna play all the way there to the right. So I'll leave it at zero. And then we also have some options down here for the LFO. So I could turn on my LFO and then I could modulate the grain size. 
So let's go ahead and adjust the cycle here, and we have it on a sine wave LFO. So you have some other options on the type of shape you can have your LFO. So I can raise up my LFO on the green. and create some cool effects with the LFO, and you can assign it to the file position. So next we have this thing called spray, which is kind of cool. So if I play a note, then it's just gonna loop within this little loop section. But if I increase my spray, then it will start to pick other random slices of this audio file to play that are outside of this little loop section. And then you have some options for only playing the samples to the right or to the left. And then this option for the slope. Which basically makes some adjustments to when these little slices are being played outside of this loop. So I already explained the LFO. Let's go to this thing called scan now. So let me play a note. And notice it scans to the right of my loop here. So I have some options for the curve. I have the time. I have the distance. And then we have our key tracking option. And then we actually have an option here for velocity. And that's gonna create some variations on the sound depending on how hard I hit a note on my MIDI keyboard. We have this little shape here, which is basically going to be the cross fading of this loop. So it's at standard right now. Let's turn off the spray. And the scan. So I can change it to standard, fall, rise, and then noise. And then you have some options for changing the shape even further, like that. So I'll leave it at standard right now. Let's go on to AM. So this is gonna be your amplitude modulation. So amplitude, just think of it being like your volume or your gain. So I can raise this up. And we can hear what that is doing. Then we have this thing where you have flux or void. So I had it on flux, let's change it to void. And then you have this thing called residual, which is almost sounds like you're lifting up the gated sound a bit. You can actually send in audio to the granulator too, and then record it. And that's what this little option is for, but I just like dragging and dropping samples. And then you have your output options here. And let's go ahead and go into the next view. So we were on grain, let's go to filter. This is where you're gonna find your ADSR envelopes and some other filters. So you have your ADSR filter here with your attack decay, sustain, and release. You can change the pitch. You have a fine tuning pitch option. You have this little V here, which means if I hit my note softer versus harder, then it will be different pitches. You have the key tracking. And then you can actually randomize pitch. So that's pretty cool sounding. Then you have some frequency modulation. And then you have your AD, S, and R for your frequency modulation. So I could assign this envelope here, let's say 100%. And use my envelope like that. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And then you have your filter options. So you have filter A and B, and you have low pass, high pass, band, notch, and EQ. And then over here, you have low pass, high pass, band, notch, and EQ, so same thing. And then you can also assign these filters to this envelope by using this little option here. So there's your low pass. There's your high pass. We can assign it to the envelope.
and do some cool things with those filters. Another cool thing is that I can load in audio sources that would not typically be thought of as musical, like here is just a festival crowd noise. And if I load that into granulator and turn this grain size all the way up, or making it just really, really small, the grain size. Now I just created a keyboard sound out of that crowd noise. I wanted to show you all the parameters of the granulator too, so you had a basic understanding of how to use it, and also to help give you a fundamental understanding of granular synthesis. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like, and also please consider subscribing to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. And finally, if you are truly looking to improve your mixing skills, then check out my Modern Mix Academy. This is going to be a full online mixing course that I created that will help you make some of the best mixes of your life from the comfort of your own home. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.